Have you worked with addicts? Yes, I have. Did he did he signal you in any way that he was one? Did no, you feel no, he, he did one? not. No, he did not. I just saw him as a loving, caring father, nurturing father, and passionate about his work. Very creative, and loves. I mean, he just loved mankind. He never said a negative thing about anybody or anything. What did you think when he died? Other than being shocked, was there a part of it not surprising to you, since you'd gone through some medical things with him? The only part, I was shocked. I was very shocked because of the fact that um, I didn't understand it. I didn't understand what happened, you know. And I, I do know that. Uh, but on the other hand, you knew he had some. Probably had sleep problems. He had sleep problems, but I do know on uh, one day it was uh, Father's Day. Uh, he called me, and I hadn't seen him in three months. And he called me. He said, uh, and he was a little frantic. He said, I'm not feeling well. Um, didn't say it as calmly as I'm saying it right now. Um, but he said, I, I have these symptoms, and I don't feel well. One side of my body is very, very hot, and one side is very, very cold. And three months prior, when I learned of the medication, I told him I didn't know what it was. I will investigate it. And I called a physician friend, and I asked him about it. And he told me what it was, and I'm saying... I went back and told Michael, I said, Michael, this is something serious. You, you don't want to take this. You just don't want to take this. What do you make of the hot and cold thing? Um, when he was giving me his symptoms, I was in Florida. I happened to have been in the, IC, in the ER myself when he was telling me his symptoms. Um, and I told him, I said, this sounds serious. You know, I don't know what's going on with you. For you to say one side of your body is hot, one side is cold... And the reason I feel he probably reached out to call me on, e on Father's Day is because three months prior, I had a chance to take my PDR back to his house and show him the side effects of this medication. And I think, you know... When you think maybe he got it? He got the medication from somewhere else? I was concerned. spend some time, however, on the phone with Cheryl and Lee, the registered nurse, who apparently was involved in some way with administering drugs to Michael Jackson, as she says. When did you, when did you work with him, Cheryl? Uh, from January until um, three months ago. Of this year? Yes. How did he uh, retain you? Um, actually, through a very close dear friend, um, he called and uh, had a concern kids had a little cold and um, wanted to know if I would come by and take a look at the kids. And then while I was there, he said, well, what else do you do? And I said, well, I help people if they have low energy. And, you know, some of the people I've worked with were low energy when they needed it was Shaquille O'Neal uh, through his uh, father-in-law, uh, Lee Nelson. And and so it sort of so, happened from there. And then you, you did you see him various at various times at his home? Yes, I did. Okay. And when did he ask you about the drug Deprovan? About three months ago. And what is Deprovan? And when he mentioned it to me, I actually had never heard of it. <clears throat> and so what I did was, I said, are you sure? What are you trying to tell me? Because it sounds so much like so many other things. And um, I was at his home. I excused myself from him. I called a dear friend, a physician, and asked him what was it. And he said, that is a very serious drug, one that you do not use in, uh, outside of a hospital. It's only used in the ICU. And basically, it's to quiet this a portion of the nerve ending in the, well, a component of the brain. And he actually kind of broke it all down. And I said, okay. So I went back to Michael, because uh, I had to step out away from the house, because the reception is bad to use a cell phone in his home. And I went back to Michael, and I said, Michael, this is, uh, why do you want this drug? He said, well, I told you, I need to sleep. And I had already kind of watched him a couple times. He said, I want you to sort of stay here and watch me 
Did you? I, I want to cut through. To, did you give him the drug? Oh no, no, no! This is. I did not give him the drug. I warned him not to take this drug. I said, I don't know who. Ha, have you ever taken it before? He said, Yes. I just want to go to sleep and sleep well. I, if you can find me an anesthesiologist, or can you find me someone to come here and monitor me while I sleep, while they, while they give me this IV? I said, uh, Michael, this is not a safe drug. This is not a safe drug. So this is when I went back and to my office, picked up my PDR, went back to Michael and showed him verbatim in the PDR what would happen to him. He ca I said, you cannot take this. I don't know why someone told you this is safe. It is not safe. That drug is given intravenously, isn't it? Yes, it is. Do you, so you would have no knowledge if after talking to you he took it? No, because I didn't see him anymore after that. That was three months ago. Did you have, therefore, based on that conversation, grave concerns about him? I had concerns, but I had concerns that he couldn't sleep. And I know I didn't know of anybody who was going to give him that drug. I said, no one is going to give you that drug. If somebody did give it to you a long time ago, that's probably why they never gave it to you again. And in what setting did you have it? He said, and he didn't want to answer all the questions. I said, okay. But I said, let me just show you. He said, okay, I see it's dangerous, but as long as somebody monitor me, I should be okay. I said, no, you're not okay. Carolyn, uh, Sherilyn, rather have detectives talk to you about this? No. Uh, you would uh, cooperate with them if they did, though, right? Almost definitely, yes. When you heard of his death, therefore, were you shocked? Oh, my. I was beyond shocked. I I'm still shocked. You know, Even though you knew he wanted this drug which could harm him? I knew he wanted it, but I didn't see anyone giving it to him. Personally, I just didn't see, after warning him, I didn't see anyone giving him that drug after I went through all the information as to what would happen to him. What medicines did you give him? I didn't give him any medicine. I only gave him nutrition. Oh, I see. So you did things to help with his energy and with his energy, food cocktails, products and the like. Yeah, food I got products, it. yes. So I went back to Michael because uh, I had to step out away from the house because the receptionist had to use a cell phone in his home. Have you ever taken it before? He said, yes. I just want to go to sleep and sleep well. I, if you can find me an anesthesiologist or can you find me someone to come here and monitor me while I sleep while they, while they give me this IV. I said, uh, Michael, this is not a safe drug. Find me an anesthesiologist to be with me here overnight and give me this IV. He kept saying anesthesiologist like he knew. Michael was fully aware of it. He said, I had it before and I slept good. Michael Jackson wanted a medical attendant to give him an IV drip of Diprovan. Yes. Just, just so he could sleep. Yes. Who gave it to you? My doctor. And he was so adamant. Like, he totally believed that his doctor said this is safe. I said, who is the doctor? And if he gave it to you, where is he? Oh, I, I don't know where he is. It was a long time ago. But I know this worked for me. When it drips in my body, the first drop, I'm asleep. You know, I've watched my children. They're sleeping. You know, I just want to go to sleep. And I said, have you taken sleeping pills? He said, they don't work. And I went to um, my office to get my PDR. So I said, a physician death reference. It's like the Bible of medicine. I said, this medication is not good. I got this chill through my body. And I said, Michael, if you take that medicine, you might not wake up. I said, it's not, it isn't having someone monitoring you. You don't need to have this. He said, if somebody stay here and monitor me with this IV, then I would be okay. I would be okay because they're going to be here 24 hours or 12 hours to monitor me so I could sleep eight hours. I was in Florida at a medical convention. And they called me and said, Michael uh, wants to see you. It's urgent. He, he really wants to see you. And I can hear him in the background tell her. Tell her that half my body is cold, half my body is hot. And I'm who like, calls you? Who, who, who? The security. Who is that? Um, 
right now I'd rather not say names. I said, you know, I can't come, Michael. I'm in Florida. And I didn't even tell him I was in the ER. I said, you need to go to the hospital. Something came over me and I said, Michael, you keep wanting to sleep. You keep saying you're going to be knocked out in sleep. But what about waking up tomorrow? Why are you coming forward with all this? I'm coming forward because the more I watch the news and the more they kept saying drugs, and I'm thinking, this is not drugs. It wasn't the drugs they're saying. The Demerol, the this, the that. I mean, it wasn't you that. think it was the drug he was after? Yeah. He said, I am so sleepy. Uh, I cannot sleep. I want to have at least eight hours of sleep. He asked me if I could just spend the night with him, just watch him, just see his pattern of sleep. And so when I did that, and when I was there, he was sleeping really good. He was, you know, he rested, and but in three hours, he woke up. And he said, now do you understand? I'm not pretending I really need sleep. You know, I didn't see him anymore. That was three months ago. Why, if you hadn't seen him in three months, would somebody on his staff call you out of the blue, especially if he had a doctor on his staff? I didn't know myself. Only reason, only thing I thought of is he re recall the symptoms I was telling him he might have. Have you talked to authorities? No, I have not. 